Welcome to Meet Your Nominee. I'm Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm here with Derek Waters from uh, Junk History. Hi, how are you? Thank Good, you for having you? me back. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. You yeah. are once again nominated for Outstanding Variety Sketch Series. Somehow, somebody fooled another person, and <laughs> somehow I'm still here. So we were talking off camera about your other nominees, yeah. all of the competition uh, in your category. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, I mean, people are always saying like oh I don't care if I win it's just cool to be nominated like no that's really true like to know that we're in the same uh, almost collaboration of like you know Amy Sedaris I mean is gonna beat that Sarah Silverman I love her so so much Tracy Ullman Saturday Night Live and Portlandia I mean it's just like oh you're considering us to be in the same category as those guys that's so cool I'm so, so lucky. It's a great group. It's my favorite group. <laughs> I wish we all hung out. <laughs> <laughs> what does Emmy Night look for you, look, look like, like for you? Because you, you've done it before. Um, yes, it's a lot of sweat. It? I, uh, yes, it would be hard to say no, I don't enjoy <laughs> it. Um, I, I'm nervous, you know, and it's like, obviously, like, winning and losing is like a whole... A thing on its own but just like going to something that you grew up watching and um knowing how many people are watching but mm -hmm. it's just like wow well, i got invited to the ball just knowing like no one's gonna ask me to leave it's like a pretty cool feeling <laughs> yeah uh, yeah Do i'm gonna eat before though oh good idea yeah i we were interviewing uh, ted danson and he said that there was Back in the day, you used to bring all your food and fill all your pockets with food. That Yeah, why don't they bring that back? Fanny packs. <laughs> Fanny packs Great. for the Emmys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess a power bar. Yeah. Not a burrito or anything Just like keep that. It yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, maybe something that smells bad to get people to leave. Like, oh, we won because everyone left because we brought that <laughs> smelly burrito. Cool. <laughs> Is there anyone you want to dance with at the after party? Dance with? Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not much of a dancer, uh, so I'll just say my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Great. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I'm invited to an after party, yeah. I like to dance with her. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about season five. Oh, yes. Um, so you've said before that you've always wanted the show through the seasons to evolve. How did it evolve in season five? Evolvement is like trying to continue to find the stories that I wish we were taught in school or just that I have no idea why I don't know about them till now, you know, to evolve in that way, but also do different types of episodes like we did one called Drunk Mystery. Right. Could, is, yeah. Tell us a little bit about Drunk Mystery. Well, I loved and still love Unsolved Mysteries. That's one yeah. of my all time favorite shows. And so I thought it'd be fun to have a Robert Stack sound alike doing a voiceover as I lip sunk the Robert Stack and we did three stories uh, that were unsolved mysteries. So it's like keeping the same concept but letting the show like prove like history is all different types of things and it's just the main thing that I, I want to see uh, in general are just good stories, mm -hmm. you know, and finding good stories. Um, but, you know, I still want to do the cool historical stories as well. Yeah. Got to hit the classics. Got to hit the classics. Get that <laughs> Ben Franks in there. Get that A.B. Lincoln in there. You know, <laughs> you got to get the classics in there. Yeah. With D Drunk Mystery, the mm -hmm. last uh, story, the Circleville mm -hmm. letters, I believe, mm -hmm. there was a speculation at the end mm -hmm. about you kind of solved the mystery. Or you had the nar the narrator solve the mystery. Well, that was an interesting twist. That well, the <laughs> I got to be careful with this because uh, <laughs> I, I that I didn't solve it. You know, <laughs> that person's still alive. That I'm just it was a theory. It was a, a theory, possible yeah. theory that this is how. It could have happened, mm -hmm. but that one was neat because it actually was a story on on unsolved mystery. So there was reenactment within the reenactment, just for all my meta comedy fans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, you you always play characters uh, throughout the season. You had some really interesting characters this season. Mm -hmm. You were everything from William Shatner. Yeah, yeah or Robert Stack, but I know what Rob you mean. Yes, oh, no, it was William Shatner as well. William yes. Shatner. Sorry, yes. Um, and you were also Hitler. 
Yes. So how did that come to be? How did you decide to play Hitler? <laughs> Many auditions. No, it was, uh, I don't know, you know, when you're playing somebody or when you have a story that involves somebody so bad, I want, uh, the, the audience knows that I know that's a bad guy. So mm -hmm. I felt more comfortable having me play that part than having somebody of me going like, hey, you really remind me of Hitler. The only other person I've had play Hitler is Weird Al, just because <laughs> how are you not going to smile looking at Weird Al? It's yeah. like, yes, Hitler was awful, but he did exist. Like, I do need to, like, have him in some stories mm -hmm. to um, show uh, what the people that were against him and what uh, how they took him down eventually. Yes, and yeah. you've had some amazing costuming on your show. It's been nominated as well for Emmys before. And won, yeah. That was our one yeah. Emmy we've won, yeah. Um, so are there any particular time periods that you like to dress in? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> that's a good question. I, I am uh, a baby in many different ways, but one is like wool I'm not a big fan of. Yes. So, um, but... We're doing stories about baseball this upcoming, so I love, like, oh, I get to wear, like, baseball uniforms. Yeah. Those I like. I, I don't know, even though it's heavy outfit, like the Revolutionary War, I just think are fun outfits. Yeah. 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 But it's funny to think people actually wore these outfits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's fun. I like them all. Yeah. Do you ever find yourself gravitating towards any particular moment in history? Is there a time period that you just see amazing stories coming out of mm. over and over again? It's a great question, but there really is, like, it's it's more like there's just certain types of people. And I, I can't say there was a certain time where there were more people standing up for um, realizing stuff wasn't right, because there always has been stuff that isn't right. And it's just finding moments throughout history where there were those types of people that were sticking up for saying, like, hey, this isn't right, I'm going to make my voice heard. It's trying to find those people, if that makes sense, more yeah. than a time period. Yeah, trying to find the heroes and the heroines. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like that, yes. <laughs> Do you, I, I assume that a lot of people are pitching historic events to you mm -hmm. quite often. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever gotten a good pitch from, uh, from somebody out of the blue, or is it more kind of within your creative circle? Oh, that's hard. Every pitch <laughs> I've ever gotten is a good pitch. I like every <laughs> story, and I just can't get them all in there. But just keep picking us up, and we'll make more stories. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of it's from my friends or researchers that um, I found. But, you know, when people come up and say, oh, you should do this, and whether it's good or not, it's, like, better than them saying, like, hey, I hate your show. So I, I just accept it as, like, a, uh, I just take it as gratitude and say thank you. <laughs> do you have any narrators in the past season that you were really, you were really uh, excited about or, or surprised or had a, had a great reaction? Great well, interaction with. Well, Tiffany Haddish did Heroines, and, um, you know, she was just about to become... I mean, she's always been Tiffany Haddish, but, mm -hmm. like, she was just on the brink of hitting it, and I just had so much fun with her, and uh, we met once before, and I just couldn't stop smiling, and those are the type of people that I just love having tell stories, because whether you... You know, and I feel like this in the show or any kind of documentary type world is when somebody's telling you something that they believe in and love, like whether you believe in it or not, you just can't help but like smile and like be intrigued by their passion. And that's what I've always wanted the show to stay true to is just passionate people talking about something they're passionate about. And uh, do you have some dream narrators or dream uh, players that you're still you're still wanting to? Always. Include. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll always uh, aim for Bill Murray. Mm -hmm. I'll always want to work with him. I'll always want Eddie Vedder to be in the show. <laughs> Pearl Jam's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I also am, like, so lucky with everyone that we've gotten. Because everyone that does the show, it's a cable show that everyone works for scale, and they come and work a whole day for very little money. And I'm, I'm very thankful for that because... Um, I don't always want to work in low budget, but it does prove that when everyone's there, they're there for one purpose, and that's like just for the project or the story. So 
um, I humbly think that's why the show's lived as long as it has. Yeah. Did you have you ever asked for Ken Burns to come on? Uh, I want to. Uh, yeah, we're doing a baseball uh, episode, and I was like, it'd be really cool to play catch with mm -hmm. Ken Burns in the episode. But uh, I don't know if he would want to get drunk. But I was at something recently, and I was very close to him, and I just couldn't build up the courage <laughs> to ask him. Because it, it seems very uncomfortable to just say, hey, would you like to get drunk with me and we'll film it? Like, it, how, do you st how do you open up with that? Yeah. You know, like, it's a very <laughs> hard <laughs> question to ask somebody. But, no, I would be completely honored to do anything mm -hmm. with Ken Burns. If you, have you ever kind of made that leap towards somebody, hey, would you like to get drunk with me on camera? and had it successfully work out, like, you got a good response. Well, Bob Odenkirk's my, uh, one of my all-time heroes, and uh, he did it last year, and that was a dream come true, because mm -hmm. he rarely drinks, and, like, I don't know, it's, it's, you're put in the most vulnerable state of, like, okay, I'm trusting you with, like, me being drunk, and that you're not going to edit this in a way of exploiting me, and I do think that's why we've gotten great people, is because... I would never exploit anyone, mm. you know. And you've said before that the, the footage that you get, that we get to see, that's basically all you've got. Everything that le <laughs> is left on the cutting room floor is yeah. not usable. Yeah, the other six hours is nothing <laughs> left for anyone to, to uh, see. And not because there's anything to hide. It's just like it takes a long time to tell a story, sober or not, you know. Mm -hmm. But, in, you know, adding alcohol to it makes it even harder you know? yeah 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 now the events of the past two years mm -hmm. with the uh, with the election that mm -hmm. happened have been historical and insane mm -hmm. would you do anything that's very close to present day mm, there uh, you know there's a couple rules that I have like for the show and one of them is there's got to be an ending and right now <laughs> I hope it's coming soon, but uh, <laughs> there needs to be an ending to tell a story. And so, but I have found stories that have a common thread to the present day that, you know, and, and that's also something like we thrive on is like not being a preachy show or, you know, it like the stories may have political moments, but that the show isn't political. It's just saying, like, hey, this is a story that happened. It might have some, to, might, there might be some similarities that happened that are still happening now, but this is something that happened a while ago. Take it for what it is, you know? Right, like all yeah. great history programming, there needs to be a level of objectiveness to exactly. it. Exactly, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, and something to learn from. Hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Derek Waters, thank you so much for being oh, here. thank you so much for having we'll see me. See you on Emmy's night. Oh, yes, please, yes, please. Are you going to go? <laughs> um, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes. I'll be at the after parties. <laughs> okay, well, that's the fun part. Yeah. That's the fun part. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, oh, Emmys. <laughs> Emmys. <laughs>